Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in this video, we're gonna begin a three-part series talking about configurations inside of Fusion. Now, this is a topic that we started covering when it first was released into the Fusion update, but we're gonna start a new project where we configure two parts. In the second video, we'll put them into an assembly. And in the third video, we'll talk about detailed drawings. So to get started, if you wanna follow along, go to the description of the video and download the NEMA motor configuration and the NEMA motor mount. Both of these designs were set up using parameters, and we're going to discuss how we can configure things like features, we're going to configure the parameters, and we're also going to take a look at configuring things like appearances and physical materials. So before we get too far into this design, it's important to note that there are many different size NEMA motors, and we're not creating a highly detailed version. We have a very simplified version here, but this design contains an external shaft on the backside, which is common on smaller NEMA 8 motors. And then the other motor sizes that we're gonna take a look at are 11, 14, and 17, which typically don't have a shaft sticking out the backside of the motor housing. There's also a couple of things that happen in different size NEMA motors. Sometimes they get smaller, sometimes they have rounded corners or chamfered corners, and we're gonna look at ways in which we can configure these features. So to get started for our NEMA motor configuration, we wanna begin by taking a look at adding a chamfer to the corners instead of a fillet, and then we'll have a feature that we can configure. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at this fillet, we're gonna right click, and we wanna suppress it. Now notice as we look through here, we have the option to configure this feature, but for right now, we're just gonna suppress it. We're gonna to go to modify and add a chamfer, and we're gonna select each of these corners, working our way all the way around. And we're going to add this as housing width, and we're gonna divide that by 10. Uh, so we're gonna be using that sort of default size for the overall width of the housing and dividing it by the value 10. Now, if you are doing a complete configuration on a highly detailed model, it's important to note that these NEMA motors do vary quite a bit. Some features are not gonna configure as well as others. So if you're using things like intersection curves and sketches, and you're changing from a fillet to a chamfer, that oftentimes is gonna cause a problem. So generally what you would do is you would add additional sketches that you could drive off of the dimensions and then use those to remove extra details. But again, we don't wanna to get too deep down this topic. We wanna to focus on just the fact that we can suppress and add additional features. Now that we've added the chamfer, I'm gonna go ahead and right click and suppress the chamfer and I'm gonna bring back the fillet. Now, the reason for that is because the fillet is on the smaller NEMA motors and the chamfer is generally on larger housings, so like a NEMA 17. Now that we have that taken care of, we're gonna take a look at how we can configure features as well as dimensions. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by selecting configure. Now, when we invoke the configuration tool or the configure option, it'll open up our configuration table and we can start selecting things that we want to configure. Now in our design, we're gonna be configuring features. So we have a feature called shaft rear. We're gonna select that. We're gonna select the suppression option and say okay. Then we're gonna select the fillet for the suppression option. And then we're gonna select the chamfer for the suppression option. So these are things that we wanna be able to suppress or unsuppress in different configurations. And then we also wanna include dimensions. So I'm gonna just pan to bring the model over to the left and then select the add parameters or the FX icon in my configuration table. Now inside of here, there are a lot of different dimensions. You'll note that some are metric and some are in inch units. We're gonna just go through and click every one of these. And the reason for this is because every one of these is going to be a unique value. So hopefully you can start to see this is the reason I did not include additional details on these models because there are a lot of dimensions that you would have to change. Go ahead and drag this out to the left until you can see all of those dimensions ending with the housing width at the very end. Now that we have this first configuration, I'm gonna right click and rename it. This first one is gonna be a NEMA 8 motor. And now I wanna add additional configurations for 11, 14, and 17. So I'll add a three over here and hit plus, which will add three additional configurations. I'm gonna start by renaming these. The second one will be NEMA 11. The third one is going to be our NEMA 14. And the fourth one is going to be our NEMA 17. 
Now, if you want to, you can go and you can go onto a website, say so you can make master car and you can download these models directly. You can also go and find tons of resources for tables and different sizes of these different motors. There are variations that are longer or shorter, but again, I just picked four different ones that we can configure. Now that we have all of these selected, we want to begin by first taking a look at the suppression state. So I'm going to rotate this housing around. The external shaft on the back side of the housing is only on the NEMA 8 motor. So I'm going to click the green checkbox to suppress this in all of the other housings. And then for the fillet and chamfer, the fillet is available on 8, 11, and 14. But when we get to the 17, we're going to suppress the fillet and unsuppress the chamfer. Now we need to take care of all the dimensions out. You're gonna to have to go ahead and punch all of these in. So we're gonna go a little bit slow here so that you can follow along and I'll call out each dimension. For the overall length for a NEMA 11, it's gonna be 2.05. And then we're gonna simply hit tab to go to the next one. Now the next value here is actually shorter. The housing length is 1.26. The next value is gonna be 18 millimeters because it's gonna take whatever uh, unit value that we have associated with that. We don't have to hit millimeters, we just type in that value. Shaft rear, this is suppressed, so it doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna enter a value of zero. The shaft diameter increases to five millimeters for the seven, uh, or for the 11, 14, and 17. Uh, the flange thickness is 0 0.08. The bolt spacing is gonna be 0.91. The mounting hole, uh, so this is actually the tapped hole for the mounting holes. This is 2.05 millimeters because it's a two and a half millimeter hole. And the housing width is 1.11. Now, one of the benefits of doing it this way is we can hit tab and it'll go to the next row for us. So now we're going to enter values for NEMA 14. This one is going to be 1.63 for the overall length. And instead of hitting caps lock, I should hit tab. So next we're gonna to go to the housing length and this value is gonna be 1.02. The shaft length is actually 13 and a half, so we can leave it the same as the NEMA 8. The shaft rear, zero again. Shaft diameter, five millimeters. The flange value, which is the small sort of bore section that sticks on the outside of the housing. This value is gonna be 0.096. Then we have the bolt spacing is 1.02. And we have the mounting tap holes 2.5 millimeters and the housing width is gonna be 1.39. And then for the last row, the NEMA 17, we're gonna be at 2.915. For the housing length, this is 1.89. For the shaft length, this is uh, going to be 24 millimeters. It's quite a bit longer on this one. For the shaft rear, again, this is zero. Shaft diameter, five millimeters. The flange value for this one is 0 0.08. The bolt spacing is 1.22. The mounting hole is 2.5. This again has a three millimeter hole size and the housing width is 1.669. So once we have all those values entered, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate the model around. And while we have the configuration table open, we're gonna click on and double click for Anima 8, double click to the 11, double click to the 14, and then go to the 17. Notice for the 17 that the fillets change to chamfers. If we go back, you can see that those go back again. Um, so again, with this process, we can go through and we can very easily configure parameters, which is a great way to create your designs, but we can also configure the suppression state of features. So if we need to add a connector in a certain location, now we can do that. But you have to be very careful and mindful with the way in which you set these models up because you wanna make sure that the references for sketches are going to be available in all models. For example, if I started a sketch on this face, this would be different for the NEMA 11 or 14 because there's a fillet and not a chamfer there. So those, re, uh, those references are oftentimes gonna get lost. So I strongly suggest you use reference sketches that don't relate to geometry whenever possible. And you use things like parameters and dimensions that have been predefined to drive all those sizes. So now that we have this design configured, I'm gonna go ahead and save this, just control S. Once you save a configured design, it'll be converted to that configured design and we can't go back. So uh, this is something that's very important. When we take a look at this inside of our data panel, you can see the icon has changed and it now has a different icon over it for that configuration. 
So the next thing that we want to do is we're going to go to this NEMA motor mount and follow the same exact process. This one's not going to have suppressed features for hole sizes. It's only going to have some, some different variations. So we're going to start the configure process, select FX, and we want to configure some of these values, but not everything. Uh, the housing width, this is directly related to the NEMA motor sizes, the uh, bolt spacing. We have one for shaft diameter, but honestly, this isn't really important for us. And the bolt diameter is going to be important because as we go up, we go to two, two and a half and three millimeter bolt sizes. So we'll say, OK, we'll add three additional configurations and then we'll begin renaming these. So I'm going to rename the first one NEMA 8, just like we did before. The second one is going to be NEMA 11. The third one is going to be our NEMA 14. And the fourth one, right click and rename, is going to be NEMA 17. Uh, so with each of these, we need to start controlling the housing width, the bolt spacing, and the bolt diameter values. And then we're going to come back and configure some additional things like materials and the uh, appearances. So for the NEMA 11, instead of 0.8, we're at 1.11. The bolt spacing is going to be 0.91. And the bolt diameter is 2.5 millimeters. For NEMA 14, we are going to be looking at a housing width of 1.39. The bolt spacing is going to be 1.02. And the bolt diameter is going to be 3 millimeters. And for NEMA 17, the housing width is 1.669 we are going to be looking at a bolt spacing of, let's see, 1.22. And we're looking at a bolt diameter of three millimeters. So that will allow us to take a look at creating variations of this. So again, we can go back and, and select each of these different housings. And we can make sure that everything does update properly. And what we should see is that the bolt hole spacing and also the hole in the center is increasing, and this should allow us to insert a NEMA motor into each of these. Now that we have the basic size configured, we can also do things like expand the bodies, right click, and we can configure things like physical material and appearance. Now, one trick to this is we want to assign these first. So if we want to assign a physical material or appearance, we should definitely do that before we get started. So I'm gonna go into metal, and I'm going to find an aluminum and simply drag it onto the body, right click. And then if we go into configure this design. Uh, so again, if we right click and, and select configure, notice that we can do things like physical material, appearance, and visibility. We're going to select physical material and say OK. And notice it puts this in the bottom section under physical material themes. The way that we work this is that we're going to create two different themes. So I'm going to right click and rename this to AL for aluminum. And I'm going to add an additional theme. And I'm going to right click and rename this one to be steel. Then we simply change the, the value for body one to steel. And you'll also notice that we can change the appearance here. This is going to be the NEMA motor mount, the top level. And then this is the body level. So when you're thinking about designs, you can apply a physical material or appearance at the component level, which is the top level of our design, or in individual bodies. So now we've got each of those. We simply need to go back through and pick which physical material we want for each configuration. So let's say, for example, the 8, 11, and 14 can all have aluminum. Then we might want steel to be available for NEMA 17. So when we do this and we go through the different configurations, we should see that the appearance has changed. And when we go to the steel version, which is NEMA 17, you can see that it has that dark steel material applied and the 14, 11, and eight have an aluminum material. So once again, let's go ahead and save this. Make sure that we are saving that configured component. Uh, and it is important to note that there are different things that we can configure. Some are going to be easier than others, but things like appearances and physical materials, those are much easier if you apply something custom. So if you apply an aluminum, then you can configure that component and it's very easy to do. And in this case, if I want to change the physical material and I've pre-selected a configuration, let's say at 14 here, and let's say that I drag the steel material to that body. If I go into my configuration table, note that this configuration is still referencing this aluminum. But 
we we need to make sure that when we're reconfiguring things, we're applying materials or appearances, that we go back into our configuration table rather than trying to manually apply those. It's going to be a much more consistent way. There are also properties that we can add. So in this case, a part number, a component name, or a description, we can add those values if we wish. And we can also do things like um, add additional components into the configuration mode. For what we're doing here, it makes the most sense just to configure those top level properties, in this case, adding physical materials. When we think about components, if we right click on our top level component and take a look at our properties, this is where you're gonna find information about the component name, the part number, and the description. And these are some of the values that we can configure for each of those different configurations. For our design, let's double check everything. NEMA 8 and NEMA 11 are gonna be aluminum, and now NEMA 14 and 17 are in a steel material. If we wanna add any additional parameters to the configuration, for example, the wall thickness value, all we need to do is uh, select those values when we're configuring. So we're gonna go into our configuration table we can add those parameters in, we'll say okay, and we'll simply add wall thickness. And what we wanna do here is in the aluminum versions, we maybe wanna make the wall thickness a little bit bigger. In the steel version, we can make it a bit smaller, 0.05, and we'll do the same thing here, making this one 0.05. So if we go back and forth between these configurations, the aluminum ones are gonna be slightly thicker, and the steel ones will be a little bit thinner, which is what you would see in reality. So now we can close that out, and now we have a saved version of both our NEMA motor mount as well as our NEMA motor configuration. Each one contains four configurations for a NEMA 8, 11, 14, and 17 variations of these motors. In the next video, we're going to talk about putting these together in an assembly, which will allow us to create configurations of a new design, which have these externally referenced configurable designs, and we can walk through the process of how we add our joints, how we put the components together, and create various configurations of configurable parts. So if you have any questions on this, please leave a comment and let us know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.